Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Carolyn and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by on this lovely Saturday. Today we are reviewing a beer called Eric Moore Cowbell. And also we're gonna apply a makeup look along with it. So if you're interested in seeing how this look comes out and this review of this beer, keep on watching. So as the title reads, we are going to be reviewing the single cut brewing company's Eric Moore Cowbell Stout. And so with this beer, I decided to kind of just switch things up a bit just because I've been doing a lot of colorful looks and like very colorful cans. I wanted to try something a little different. So I'll go ahead and show you what that can looks like. So with this brewing company, they're based out in Astoria, New York. So my very first video for this series was a single cut hibiscus sour ale, lager, a sour lager ale. And that was my very first one, so I'll go ahead and link that above just so you can check it out. This particular beer, stouts are darker in color and they're typically more sweet or bitter. Depending on the style of stout, like I'm sure a lot of you know of the Stout Guinness. Very well known beer around the world and this beer is going to be a lot different than a Guinness. Guinness is very smooth, it's got that nitro pour and that can that makes it nitro if you have it out of can. But with this particular beer, it is a sweet stout, also referred to as a cream stout or a milk stout, and it is black in color. Malt, sweetness, chocolate, and caramel should dominate the flavor profile and contribute to the aroma. It also should have a low medium roast malt barley derived bitterness. Milk sugar, which is lactose, lends the style more body. This beer does use a lactose sugar and so people with an intolerance to lactose should probably steer clear of this beer. And that's what I say with any lactose sugar beers. If you have a dairy intolerance, just stay away from them because they might bother you. They have very um, like simple logos and I kind of base beers with my designs off the designs of the cans. But with this one in particular, I think I'm gonna go a little uh, more glam, more fall forward, a little bit more bronzy, I think, just because it's that time of the year. The leaves are falling, guys, and it's time for pumpkin spice. I'm not gonna lie, I love pumpkin spice, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and crack this open. It is a 6% ABV beer, so it should be a pretty, maybe, medium bodied smooth finish i believe and uh, let's look at real quick what people are saying on untapped about this particular beer an average of a 3.8 it just seems to be it just seems to be the trend among beers that i pick out it's like usually a 3.5 or 3.8 doesn't really look like people have had a lot of a lot of things to say but it's typically it looks like when it's on draft it is on nitro pour so all right let's go ahead and crack this baby open all right, off the bat, definitely smells like a typical stout for me. And if you aren't like a big stout fan, I understand because it is an acquired taste for sure. Multi, amberish, brown, golden. I don't know, it's just it's so many different um, adjectives that you could describe a beer. All right, so right off the bat, you can tell that there's very little carbonation in this, so it's gonna be very smooth for a mouthfeel. It's obviously dark in appearance. It's multi. I don't really smell any specific chocolate or creamy notes there. It is very, it is pretty aromatic when it comes to like a slight bitteriness, but let's go ahead and give this a taste. Okay, so this one almost reminds me of a flat, like a flat soda almost, like a Coca-Cola vanilla soda. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound that amazing, but if you've ever enjoyed a vanilla Coca-Cola, then you understand what I'm saying, is that it has that sweetness, it has that caramel undertone, a slight bitterness, but it's very mild. I would say it's probably about a medium body, smooth finish as well, so. When you lick your lips, you definitely taste like a sweetness, like an aftertaste of sweetness, which is not bad. Okay, so for the Milk Stout from Single Cut Beersmiths, this is a 
very smooth stout. It's not as bitter as you expected. I taste it more towards the end of the sip. First, the beginning is very sweet, has a caramel roastiness to it that I quite enjoy. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 3.9. While I do like stouts, this is flat for me. Being said it's coming out of a can, it's not gonna be as good as nitro. Nitro is just where it's at. So think Starbucks coffee, but like alcoholic. So that concludes the review of that beer. I like it. Let's go ahead and move on to the makeup look. I'll be right back with no makeup. Okay, so we're back with no makeup. I have makeup on, but like, just no eye makeup. Yeah, let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so for today's look, I'm thinking about using the Soft Glam Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, um, just because I wanted to do a bronzy brown glam look of some sort. I want to attempt the fox eye look or beer first. So yeah, as I drink it a little bit more, it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's my preferred version of a milk stout. I've had some pretty good milk stouts in my time. Just being that I worked at Victory, I know they had they had stouts, you know, a long time ago. I haven't really seen any lately. But um, here I'm applying the Pure Cosmetics Eye Primer. First color I'm gonna take from the Soft Glam Palette is the shade Tempura. For the most part of my everyday makeup, I start off with this shade. I'm surprised I haven't hit pan yet with this because it just applies like a really nice base for my eyeshadow and also helps kind of camouflage the veins on my eyes because my skin's so transparent. We're gonna start with the color Cypress Umber. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the outer corner. Next, I'm taking a Morphe brush, and this is a Deluxe Blending Crease Brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and brush that brown into the crease and bring it over. And I'm scratching this upwards that fox eye look I guess I don't know what I'm doing next I'm taking the shade rustic and I'm just doing that above the crease right here taking that tempura shade and fixing my mistake right there what I'm trying to do is try to build up a nice gradient as best as I can so next color I'm going to take the shade Noir of that and on a luxie round brush and I'm going to go ahead and buff that into the outer corner. Alright, so I'm going to take a, a makeup wipe, try and clean that up a bit. Take that Morphe brush, with whatever's left over from that and just... It's not blending. It's not blending. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and take the color Burnt Orange. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that on the lid and buff that into the browns and the black there. Take a little bit of that rustic color, buffing that together. I'm gonna take a smaller Luxie brush and go ahead and do the lower lashes just a bit in the corner here. Just so it makes sense for my eye shape, that's why I'm taking the lighter brown and going along there just to get that kind of shape right for me. Taking a Sigma pencil brush and I'm just going to go ahead and lightly go over this line right here and smudge it a bit. Next I'm going to take this, this color right here by Natasha Nadona. This is Obade. Ob uh, that, it's a bronze that I got in the Allure subscription box. Taking a flat Morphe brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to the lid. A bit of fallout with shadow. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Kenya from the Juvia's Place palette, and I'm going to buff that in to the black brown right here. I feel like I just need something. Obviously, just blend that bronze in as well. I'm gonna spray the Natasha Nadona brush down with that shadow and apply that. See if that works a little bit better. 
that Morphe brush that outer line a bit. Okay, so let's see. I think it looks cool, right? I mean, it's not anything super crazy artistic. It's just like an everyday look that you could probably rock without anyone being like, wow, you're wearing a lot of makeup. I'd be like, so I think that's it for the eyeshadow on that eye. I will go ahead and do the next eye off camera and then I'll be right back to finish the rest. Okay, so both eyes are complete. I used the shade Glistening from the Soft Glam Palette to add a little bit more of the shimmer onto the inner of the eyelids just because that Natasha Nadona wasn't working to the best of its ability. Let's be real. For being as expensive, it should be working better. Um, here, I'm just applying a little inner corner highlight with the shade Zuri from the Juvia's Place palette. Let's go ahead and line the waterline with the shade uh, Brown from the NYX eyeliner that I have here. Now, if you're if you don't like this, don't watch. Especially for me, for having blonde eyelashes, a little bit of brown on the eyelash line helps so much. I'm just gonna take that along here too. Cute, very cute, love it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out. Are we getting foxy eye? Foxy eye vibes, I'm gonna tell you. I'm taking a little bit of the Pure Cosmetics Four in one concealer and foundation, and I'm taking Alarm Mercier's shade tan, the tinted moisturizer, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix those together. I know, very original. But it comes, it becomes like this perfect shade match for me, for, especially for the, like the rest of my body. Go ahead, apply that. Whoop! Gotta be careful, Carolyn. Watch, watch the fox eye look. Using the Pure Cosmetics Giant Foundation Brush. This is fun, it makes me feel very important. I'm kind of obsessed with this mix because it just works so well for my skin. I don't know even, I don't even understand how it's working so well together. But it's a great match, I'm telling you. I'm taking the Marc Jacobs Big Old Bronzer. Go ahead and warm up the face a bit. I like to bring it down my face. Put a lot right here by accident, so like, please don't come for me. What do we think of today's look? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not bad. I know I had a lot of fun doing this makeup look. It kind of is a little bit more neutral than what you guys have been seeing, but overall, it was still a lot of fun to try to do an almost everyday kind of like glam look. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Beauty and Brews. I will catch you guys next time on the next episode of Beauty and Brews. Bye.